Riley. Oh. So it's here. I have the new 2023 14 inch MacBook Pro. I am upgrading from my 2018 15 inch MacBook Pro that I have back here. So in this video, hopefully I give you a good idea how much technology progresses in five years, at least on the Mac side. And I'll explain to you why I'm going with this computer to upgrade my old Mac. I'm gonna unbox it, I'm gonna run some tests, and it's gonna be super sicko mode. Before we get started, please like and subscribe if you enjoy watching this content. I'll continue to put out content weekly and I'll strive to make every video as sicko mode as possible. All right, let's get to it. Let's go ahead, let's open it up. The Mac that I have here today is the 2023 MacBook Pro 14 inch equipped with an M2 Pro 10 core CPU with a 16 core GPU. I only hear good things about the M2 Pro chip. According to Apple, the M2 Pro is about double the proneness of a regular M2. And this guy is demonstrating how pro it actually is. 32 gigs of memory, a one terabyte SSD, 14 inch liquid retina display at 1600 nits, so it does get bright as ball sack. Three Thunderbolt 4 ports, an HDMI port and SD card reader, which is nice to see, they brought it back. It still has a headphone jack, uses MagSafe 3 to charge, which is way better than just using a basic Thunderbolt port. And that's really all that Apple has in their description. Get her open, let's boot her up. It's actually a little thicker than my old Mac, but do love the size of the 14 inch. It's just more portable, it's easier to carry, it's not as heavy in your bag. This has a better keyboard than mine. I have the old butterfly keys, and honestly, those keys suck. Hello, eggs and bacon? Hmm, gotta go have my eggs and bacon my wife made me, and I'll be right back. A few moments later. So if we're comparing them on paper, price-wise, you're looking at 2619 versus 2500, M2 Pro chip versus an i7 8850H, 10 cores versus 6 cores, 12 threads, 16 core GPU versus a 4 gigabyte Radon Pro 560X, 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM versus 16 gigabytes of DDR4, one terabyte SSD versus a 512 gigabyte SSD. Finally, a 1080p webcam versus a 720p webcam, and the battery should give you about 18 hours of video playback versus 10 hours of playback. And going back to my 2018 MacBook Pro, it's a six core 12 thread processor, and it was actually really impressive for the time because I had a desktop with a Ryzen 7 3700X, and whenever I was video editing in Premiere Pro, even though the Ryzen 7 3700X on paper is better than the i7 8850H when it comes to heavy CPU workloads, this Mac kicked that 3700X's butt every single time. And I did have a good GPU paired with it. I had a 2070 Super. So on the 15 inch, the battery, it's five years old, so it's not gonna hold a charge as well. I can still get about seven hours of use out of it on a single charge when I'm just doing web browsing. Having a smaller screen and having a more efficient processor than the i7 does help with that battery. A couple downsides to my old Mac is that it came with four Thunderbolt ports and one headphone jack and that was it. You're stuck having to use a USB-C adapters like this. On the new Mac, they added an SD card reader, which I use all the time, and it has an HDMI port built in, which is super nice. I can just plug that hole right in. What? The old Mac had Thunderbolt 3. The new Mac has Thunderbolt 4. As far as transfer speeds, it's not really gonna make a big difference, at least according to this website, pluggable.com. says, Thunderbolt 3 really only is meant to support one 4K monitor, while Thunderbolt 4 is supposed to support up to two. But transfer speeds should be very similar. Now, in the 14 inch model, you are able to get the M2 Max. You can configure it with up to 12 CPU cores and 38 GPU cores. That's nice and everything. I was really interested in the base M2 Pro chip. I was actually even considering getting a Mac mini. The only issue is obviously it's not portable. You have to always have it connected to a monitor and a power source. For me, I'd like to have the ability to take it on a trip or go to a coffee shop. My wife likes to work at a coffee shop sometimes, so sometimes I go with her. And one of the biggest differences is that there's no longer a touch bar. Whenever I was using a certain application, the touch bar would change and customize to that application. And I was like, cool, and then I would forget to use it. I'm not sad that they got rid of it. The keyboard is a million times better. I don't know if a laptop keyboard gets any better than this. So I did manage to run some tests. I ran the multi-core Cinebench test. I wanna compare the processors directly. And the scores that I got were 6,053 on the 2018 Mac versus 11,778 on the 2023 14-inch Mac. So about double the score 
When it's processing and exporting big 4K files, hopefully it takes about half the amount of time. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I have 27 minutes of 4K footage that I have in Premiere Pro, identical footage on both laptops. I'm going to export it, and I'm gonna time to see how fast each computer does it. So let's go ahead and do that, and then we'll compare how long each one took. First Mac finished at 13 minutes and 15 seconds. The 2018 Mac still says it has about a minute and a half to go. Thirteen minutes and fifteen seconds to process twenty-seven minutes of four K footage on the new Mac versus fifteen minutes and fifteen seconds on the twenty eighteen Mac. About two minutes faster on the new Mac. Now, based off Cinebench, it looked promising. Looked like I was gonna get really good performance. I do get that Cinebench is strictly a CPU test, so it's not really testing your GPU. Even though I got double the performance in Cinebench, it doesn't really mean I'm gonna get double the performance while video editing. But the thing is I only got two minutes better. There's really nothing that the 2018 MacBook Pro that I have here can't do. It'll still do all the video editing I need. It's just a little slower. At times I do need to restart my computer because it kind of starts to lag. It's unresponsive when I try to click on things. So it's, it does get a little frustrating. So I was hoping that this laptop would eliminate that. I wouldn't have to be doing that. And because that's really the main thing I use the Mac for, another $2,600 just to save two minutes on video editing is very disappointing. I was considering getting a Mac Studio while back with the um, M1 Max and I waited for these laptops and then they were saying the M2 Pro is really good as well. Maybe I should have gotten an M2 Pro with a better GPU with more cores or maybe I should have got an M2 Max. The thing is if I upgraded to an M2 Max in the 14 inch size or it's over $3,000 to get that processor and that's kind of spicy. There are a lot of little things that this new Mac has that the old one doesn't that makes me like it. Honestly, this one feels better in the hand. I don't know if it's just the size, but it, it, it does feel really nice. But as far as the performance goes, I'm not really impressed. I'll continue to use this laptop during the week. I'll see how it performs while I'm editing my actual YouTube videos. But I was hoping that double the amount of RAM supposedly a processor that's twice as good would give me better performance than just two minutes faster in video editing. We'll see how it performs throughout the week. But yeah, hopefully this helps you decide if you're in the same boat as me, have a 2018 Mac, looking to upgrade. My recommendation so far, based off my first impressions, performance wise, you may need to upgrade to a better model if you wanna see significant performance increases, like the MacBook Pro 16 inch, or maybe even a 14 inch with the M2 Max. And please like and subscribe if you like this content. If you have any questions about what you just saw, please leave it in the comments below. I'll start to put out videos weekly, and I'll try to make each video even more sicko mode than the last. I think that's it for now. I'm super hungry again. Lately I've been eating like crazy. Uh, it could be because I started working out again and I just feel like I have to eat every like two hours. So I'm gonna go eat and like always have a sicko mode day. So I timed how long it took to process the video and it only took the 2023 MacBook Pro 14 inch five minutes and seven seconds to process this entire video in 4K. My 2018 MacBook Pro took over 27 minutes. Big improvement, this Mac may be better than I thought. It did lag a couple times when editing but not nearly as much as the old MacBook Pro. Initially, I was not impressed with the first impression but as I used it more and more, I began to realize this M2 Pro packs a punch. Still considering an M2 Max, as my video editing needs will only continue to become more and more intense. Hope this helps. Once again, have a sicko mode day.